Lisa. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Great. Yeah, so I'm talking about that. He said that, um, oh, and oh, you, if you get a, uh, a lower grade, you need to retake it, but you can retake it at any time. But he recommends you take it soon, you know? I guess this was a good time. Yeah, don't worry about it, but as long as you get a deal. Either that or we have a big test coming up. Yeah, I did. I, um, and he's still I finally got good it. news for myself, which is I finally turned the corner on this ridiculous uh, throat problem I was having for a whole week. I uh, taught my classes on Wednesday, and I went back down in the dumps again on Thursday. Um, you know, after you talk for a while, you have to do that. But uh, then I uh, started feeling a lot better yesterday. I feel even better today. So, uh, so we're in good shape. I can go all night. Uh, hopefully, it won't take that long. Um, so, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't have the homework papers back yet. Uh, my grader is kind of unfortunately taking the long uh, road to getting those done. Uh, I may not even have them back by tomorrow, um, but you'll get them back <laughs> at the worst case on Monday at the final. Um, but the solutions are posted, and it's just those two problems. I think most people pretty much know how to do those problems. So. Um, so I think we're good on that. Um, so, but I haven't been able to update the grade sheet, and I may I may not get a chance to do that. But I'll get those, those papers back from him. Um, get full credit for those. Get full credit for those. Who, I didn't even know who did it. At this point. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so everything is up. I know a lot of people have been studying hard. I just say some a few of the things I've already told you, just to make sure you know them. Uh, the final will have 12 questions on it, just like the sample final that's posted. And um, you will be asked to do, well, your 10 best problems will count. And they will each be worth 10 points. So that's 100 points. Um, uh, I did notice something I, did, I had forgotten about in the sample test which is that the table of integrals that is actually included in the sample test is a little different than the one that I have been giving you guys for um, the tests up to this point. The reason I figured that out is somebody started doing the sample test and got to an integral that they weren't sure how to do, um, and it was because they weren't looking, they were look, looking, they were assuming it was the same old table which didn't have the integral in it that they needed. So that sample final has a little more um, advanced integral table. So I will make sure you have the most uh, up-to-date integral table. Any integrals that are not standard U substitutions or very basic um, other things, uh, I'm going to have those in the table for you. So, so try not to worry too much about that. Right? You shouldn't spend too much of your energy stressing out about doing integrations and stuff. Obviously you're going to have to do it on the test at some point, but that's kind of in the background, not really the thing to be to be most worried about. Um, I'm going to give you the Gram-Schmidt formulas. I'm going to give you the uh, differential equation for mixing problems from section 1.7, and pretty much everything else. Um, you guys are going to need to need to know. So, um, you know, there's not an enormous number of formulas in the class, but there are there are some. I mean, you need to know Newton's law of cooling. Um, Maybe I'll just make a short list of something. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. But a few formulas that would be worth looking back at again. Um, so one of them would be Newton's Law of Cooling. Um, make sure you know how to do the, uh, the Bernoulli the Bernoulli substitute. There's a couple of formulas you need to know in the Bernoulli material. You have to know how to change the variables properly, which is this equation, u equals y to the 1 minus n. And you have to know what the new differential equation becomes once you employ that substitution. So that, be, that is, unless you want to rederive it, which I don't think anybody does, uh, u prime plus 1 minus n p of x u equals 1 minus n times um, q of x. Yeah, so, so these, these things here are kind of important. Um, and then homogeneous differential equations. 
For these, you, you really just need to know the basic substitution, y equals xv, and then when you plug that in, everything kind of takes care of itself. Um, so, so those are some things you need to know from there. Um, uh, what else should you know? You should probably remember the formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. This is something you don't want to have to fumble around about. So if I give you a 2 by 2 matrix and I want the inverse of it, right? basically you need to know that you're going to divide by the determinant of that matrix, which is 1 over 80 minus dc, and then you're going to swap the diagonal numbers and change the signs on the other two numbers. So uh, inverse of a 2 by 2, that's kind of a nice formula to have down. Um, I'm trying to think what other properties that you need to make sure people know about. Um, not much in chapters um, 3, 4, or 5 at all uh, that I can think of in terms of just things you ought to have memorized. Um, in, in chapter 6, of course, the variation of parameters formula. So uh, variation of parameters. So this would be, uh, there's expressions for, for u1 and u2. Uh, negative the integral of y2 capital F over the wrong skin. And then positive the integral of y1 F over the wrong skin for u2. And then um, we also did the same thing for systems. So for systems of differential equations, um, we needed to know, okay, so the particular solution, this is the stuff we just covered uh, this past Wednesday. The particular solution is the fundamental matrix times u of t, where u of t, u of t is the antiderivative of x inverse of t, v of t. So, um, so though these two formulas are, are good to know as well. Okay. Um, so there's not a lot of formulas there. I might be missing something somewhere along the line that maybe is worth, worth knowing. But those are the main ones um, that maybe you don't remember because you don't use them all the time. Okay. Can anybody think of anything else that I'm forgetting? Pardon? Oh, the, um, yeah, the solutions to a defective <coughs> system. Yeah, I mean, um, right, so you get solutions for a defective system that are of the form, you know, e to the lambda t, w1 plus t, w2. That's if there's um, one extra solution needed for a particular eigenvalue lambda. And then it's possible that you might need to go even further and, and use, this didn't come up on the midterm, but you can sometimes have to go all the way to W3, 4, and 5. Um, so that sort of thing. Yeah, Zach? So not really formulas, but the axioms for subspaces and uh, the inner product space, the four rules of inner product Yeah, space. yeah, axioms. So axioms um, of vector spaces and for inner product spaces. That's actually, that's actually a good point. Um, we're going to review uh, both of those things tonight a little bit too. So uh, those axioms are good to know. Most of them are common sense, um, but uh, still, for some people, it's good to memorize them. I guess another one that I might that I might mention. I'm sorry, I'm so disorganized here, but all over the board. Um, but the invertible matrix theorem. <laughs> Invertible matrix theorem. Um, we pretty much did most all of that theorem. It's got a, parts all the way from, well, I guess it didn't quite do all of it, all the way from parts A through P. So you should really um, have those in mind, not so much, I don't mean it so much as if I'm going to ask you to list the parts of the inversion matrix theorem. It's more about just your comprehensive understanding, conceptual understanding of invertible matrices. What they are good for, um, and if I have an invertible matrix, it means a lot of things, right, that we can say. So, so 
So just being aware of the parts of that of that theorem, uh, that would be a really a really good idea. Um, so the final is my chance to re-ask questions about things that are really important in the course. Or it's my chance to ask about something that I didn't ask you about before, that I would have liked to, but just didn't have time on the quizzes or the exams. For example, we never did a, I'm not saying I'm going to do this, but you know, we never did one of these on the midterms. You know, so there's something that I might choose. I don't know. I'm not saying I would, but um, you know, just think of thinking of, the other thing is, you should be thinking about what are the things we've spent a lot of time on. The things that we, that we have spent a lot of time on are the things I'm going to be asking you about. I'm not likely to pick on topics that we only spoke briefly about and didn't really ever use. So obviously, um, you know, the invertible matrix theorem, we've talked a lot about that. That's a big, that's a big deal. That's very important. Um, pretty much everything that's up here is stuff that we've used and talked quite a bit about. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, that you're comfortable with it. Okay. Oh, there's a there are other formulas. There's Ronskian formulas, and there's of course I'm going to give you the Gram Schmidt formula, so don't worry about that part. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I, I would suggest um, going through your notes um, for the semester. Those are the highlights of the material, and just read through the notes. And when you hit something, you're like, oh, I don't understand what the point of that was, or I don't know how to solve those problems. That's when you can follow up with me in office hours or take a look at the homework in that section to see what it was about, right, and maybe spend a little extra time on that. Um, a lot of people did well, uh, especially well on this most recent test that we just took on Monday, which to me is a good sign. What it means is that maybe that material you don't need to spend quite as much time on because it's fresh and current. Not that I want you to take it lightly. I don't want you to, you know, fall apart on me here. But if you know that stuff that we, that we covered on the third test, it should be pretty fresh in mind. I know it's kind of a pain to take a test so late in the semester, but it now has the payoff that studying for the final should be less of a chore. Um, so what I've been noticing is a lot of people have been spending their time studying some of the older stuff so far, the vector spaces, the inner product spaces, linear transformations, um, subspaces, all that kind of stuff. And I think that's good. I actually think that I think that the best things to be studying really are going to be the chapter one, get that back in your mind again, and then the chapters four and five stuff. I really do believe that that's the most important stuff to study. And so in fact, when we look at these review session questions, when we start looking at these in a minute, you know, there's like 11, 12 problems here. I'm not going to do them in order. I'm going to, I'm going to jump to problems that I think are most relevant to the stuff that um, that we need to brush up on. Okay. Body. Yeah. We expect you to go farther than W5. You mean W6789? <laughs> okay. How much time have I spent talking about W678 and 9? You, you talked about, 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 about 10 seconds is probably right. So the chances of me asking you about that are very slim. Okay. I would have to be in a terrible. I would have to be in a terrible mood. Uh, so what do you have some questions? No, no it's, it's, it's reasonable to ask me that. No, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to ask you about that. I, I will just flat out tell you right now. We're not going past W five. That's a segue three. Um, what do I recommend that you study the most? I would definitely recommend going through all of the groups. Um, solve them all again. You can print them out blank if you want, and then just rework them yourself and see how it goes. Um, I, the reason I say the group works is they do cover a lot from the whole semester, um, but yet they are reasonable to do. I, I'm not going to tell anybody here that they should go back and redo all the homework from the semester. Okay, that's just not, that's not realistic. <laughs> It's just going to stress you out, you won't sleep, and you won't really know the stuff. So I would say the group works. And I also printed blank copies of the midterms, and those are posted on the website. And you may want to print 
one or more of those out. I'm not saying you necessarily have to do all three of them, but if there was one or two of those midterms that you feel you're not fresh on or you didn't do as well as you'd like, then it might be worth, worth doing. Um, even the quizzes, you know, you can print out the quizzes and just try those again. Um, I'm glad you're all here today. You've got I me mean, after tonight. You're going to get a better idea of where you're, what you need to work on, and you're going to have two full days to go do that, which will be great. Potty? I've noticed because I'm, I'm doing what you said, redoing all the rubrics. Yeah. Um, I'm on uh, rubric 10 right now. Uh -huh. There is a huge gap when it comes to like material you covered. When really? It was a group not or group work nine. You, uh, it was uh, the inner product spaces, but group work ten is whether or not things are diagonal. Oh, really? So there was a, nothing on linear transformation. Yeah. That was probably right because that was right before spring break when we had a test around that time. So I just didn't get didn't get it in there. So that that shouldn't be viewed as a sign that it's not important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But so, so that's why you know, just doing only the group works would probably not be a good idea. But doing the group works together with redoing the exams and or the quizzes would be good. And then any particular type, if you say, oh man, I don't know how to do kernels of linear transformations, then you need to go to the book and say, oh, that's 5.3. Let me re get my notes on that section. Let me get the book open. I'll look at the homework from that section. And maybe do that section again. So nobody's gonna, no, nobody in here is gonna like redo every section. We probably covered like 75 sections of the book. Nobody's gonna go redo all of those. But there might be three or four or five particular sections that any individual person in here might say, yeah, I probably should review those. And, and that's, that seems reasonable. It should, be some, it should be a reasonable amount of study, right? I think it's possible to like overdo it and not get any sleep and, and feel overwhelmed and not have the confidence. Uh, and I don't actually want that. I would rather have you um, be realistic in your expectations of, of what you can do. Be confident in the fact, I mean, I know that, you know, I have two very good 250D classes this semester. I have a lot of people that know the stuff well, or at least know lots of parts of it well. So that we sh there should, this should not be a uh, chaotic, frenzied, you know, session to get it all together because most of you are not in that position of being, you know, trying to cram it all in at the last second. You already know so much more than you probably give yourself credit for. So um, I think that'll help you out a little bit. Sergio, on the test, like when it comes to like the grading, like for um, seven point six, there's a lot of little steps, and if like let's say we messed up a sign or like uh -huh. a, a number, but we did all the steps correct. Yeah. Would you still get like a fair amount of points for that? Yeah, you would. Okay. You would. I'd, I'd grumble about it because it's going to take me much longer to grade because I follow all your mistakes all the way through, which I hate doing. So please be careful. I was going to have a test too. If there's a part where we're stuck, like starting it, uh -huh. do we ask you like a like you dock off points? You can all, give us the start Yeah, I've I've been known to do things like that. Like I can't figure out the lambdas, so you come up and ask me, and I roll my eyes three times. And, um, <laughs> then break down and say, all right, this is going to cost you. Um, so I, I, I am open to possibly doing that. You just have to come up and ask me. Okay. And if I don't feel comfortable doing it, I just won't do it. And if I do feel comfortable doing it, I'll probably open it up to the whole class. So, and I'll let everybody know that. But at the, at the yeah. present time, I'm not, I'm not writing the test. I'm not going to write the test with the mindset of, oh, well, they can always come ask me this or that. I'm writing it with the mindset of everybody should be able to just do it without having to come up and have long conversations with me. So, I was going to go out, you know, while you're taking the test, just have a party somewhere. You know? That's fine. I, was, I wasn't even going to be here, so... I'm just kidding. Speaking of that, don't forget, if you're take, if you're in my 1 p.m. class, um, we're starting a little early, 2.15 until 4.45. Starting early and we are ending a little late. And if you're in my 2.30 class, uh, if you're in my 5.30 class, sorry, then we are starting on time. I mean on time and relative to when we're supposed to start. Um, and But I'm going to let you work until um, 7.30, an extra half hour at the end. So um, make sure that you come, especially the 1 o'clock people, that you show up a little early so I can give you a little extra time. Okay? So that's just, I'm, I'm going to write the same test 
<laughs> it's going to be exactly based on a two-hour time frame, but uh, I'm going to let you work for an extra half hour. I really, I really think that made a difference actually on the third test. That you know, um, not lecturing at the beginning, you had an extra yes. thirty minutes. Yes. 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 Right. So this is basically trying to give you another thirty-minute bonus. Here. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Uh, anything else before we start on the problems? Yeah, it's, it's probably just about about it. Does anybody have any questions or concerns or comments about any of that? Okay, if not, I'm going to take out, um, and this is posted online if you don't want to copy down a lot of stuff, and I've got the solutions to this also. We're going to go through some of these final exam review session questions, and we'll just go, you know, until people are tired of talking about this material. Um, but I've got all the time in the world, so there's no rush. Um, and I'm not going to go in order either. And we can even deviate from it. Like if there's something that's not on this sheet that we feel we need to go over, we'll do that too. You guys can just let me know as well if there's certain things that, that you think we should, that we should be going over. Okay. Um, let's, let's start with um, a relatively easy one on the review sheet. I'm going to start with problem number four. I'm going to jump in um, into the linear algebra stuff first. Okay. So here's a question. I'm going to give you a set S, and S is the set, in case you don't have this with you, 2A minus B, B, negative 3B, and 0, such that A comma B is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so then this is a two-part question. The first part is show S is a subspace of M2 of R. Okay? So I want to show that it's a subspace. Let's see. Um, can anybody remind me to show that something's a subspace, what do I have to do? Great. Two steps, right? Closure under addition and closure under scalar multiplication. Exactly right. So well, I'm wondering, would you mind trying to get the door open? There should be a trash can outside, just to kind of keep the air flowing in here. Yeah. <coughs> or is this the trash? I think that's the trash. Okay. okay. There we go. Thank you. Um, because I don't know if they run the AC around here on the weekends. I feel worse than that would be the other way. That would work. <laughs> okay, closure under addition and closure under scalar multiplication. So if I want to check closure under addition, how do I start? So let capital A and capital B be elements of S. That's, that is one way to start it off. Not the only thing you could do. What you, when you start it off like this, you're writing your vectors very abstractly. Capital A, capital B, you're writing them um, without giving me the details. So if you're going to start me off this way, that's fine, but then you're going to need to explain what it means, or you're going to have to rewrite A and B using this formulation here. So I have to know that my matrices have that form. So I would write A as what? 2A minus B, B, 3, negative 3B, three 0, and capital B, be sure that when you are introducing uh, letters for a second matrix, you need to use different letters, right? So I would use something like 2C minus D, and then D, and then negative 3D, and then 0, um, like that. Make sense? Everybody understand, everybody knows this symbol here, right? This is element of, or belongs to. For the names of these? Yeah, see, you guys are allowed to call your vectors whatever you want to call them. There's nothing that says that it has to be A and B. It could be X and Y. It could be A1 and A2. It could be C and D. Whatever you want to use. And same thing over here. I could have used, you know, instead of C's and D's, I could have used X's and Y's. It would not be wrong to do that. 
The key thing is the form of the matrices has to be consistent with what capital S, what its elements look like. Okay? So what's the next thing I'm going to want to do? Add them. Exactly. I want to add them together. So I'm going to do A plus B. And when I add them together, I'm going to get 2A minus B plus 2C minus D, and then B plus D, and then negative 3B minus 3D, and then 0. <coughs> okay, what next? Yeah, um, some people I've noticed want to just jump straight to element of S here, but it would be better, although I might, I might actually give that credit. I would prefer to see you rearrange it though, so that it, does, so that it actually looks like this format again. 2 times something, so we take out the 2 and it's multiplied by what? A plus C. Right, A plus C, and then minus the quantity B plus D, you've got to use parentheses on that. And then we have B plus D, and then what do I want to do on the lower left corner? Negative 3, take, negative out, the plus three. take out the negative 3, it leaves me with B plus D. <laughs> and then zero, and then I look at that result, and I actually, you just do this in your head. You're not showing this on your paper, you just do this in your head. Is this an element of S? You just check, does it have this format? And it does. So you just say element of S here. You must include that though, okay? I'm fussy about that part. You have to tell me that the result is in S. Okay, so it's closed under addition. All right, closure under scalar multiplication. How do I start that off? Let A B as above. Let capital A be as above. K be, uh, B and R. And K be an element of the real numbers. Very good. So K is a scalar, and um, capital A is as above. Then all we have to do is take K times A and work this one out. So K times A, that's going to be K times the matrix 2A minus B b, negative 3b, and 0. We have to get back looking at the entries again. And this becomes, we're going to multiply the k through everything. So it's going to be 2ka minus kb, kb, negative 3kb, and 0. Okay? And that actually already pretty much has the proper, the proper form for the elements up here. Everywhere I see a B, I now have KB. Everywhere I see an A up here, it's now being filled by KA, right? Um, what I don't want to see people do, and I unfortunately see this too often, is people will want to then take the K back out again and put it back out in front of everything, and they're like, no, don't do that. That's going back to how you started. You started with the K out in front of everything, the whole, pro the whole goal of this line is to get the K inside the entries of the matrix. So you don't want to factor it back in. As simple as it looks to factor it back out, when you do that, you are simply going in a circle. You're not making any progress with it. But you'd like the K on the 2K, would you like that like in parentheses? K it would be absolutely, it would be absolutely impressive to me to see the see things parenthesized like this. What you mean? I was going to do like K and then two A plus B. You really don't want that. You want the two out in front. So you're you're happier to have K and then parentheses two A. Right. Uh, that's that would be an intermediate step. But ultimately, this is where you want to get to. Okay. So you want them all distributed amongst. Yeah, you want that to go through every single, okay. every single thing you see there. Okay, am I done here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't let it ask. Thank you. Good. Okay, so it's a substance. Remember that there are a whole bunch of other axioms of a, of a vector space, but the rest of them get inherited by S from the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices. So the only axioms that don't get inherited from the larger vector space are these two uh, closure axioms here. So that's why we have to be so careful to check those two. Okay? Everybody all right with that? So this is a pretty easy one. In a minute, I'm going to do a slightly harder one. But before I do that, there's a part B here. And part B is find a basis um, and dimension for S. So does anybody remember how to find a basis for S? Bust out the variables. Yeah, bust out the variables. You really should have a math 250B 